this will show you how the web works. There's several steps to when you do a web page. You start with a browser, you work through the connection, and on down until you get to the server. And it's a client-server relationship. So I'm going to use this video to draw you a picture on how this all works. So we're going to start with the browser. Up here with a nice little flat screen. And this is our browser. And it could be IE or Firefox or um, various different browsers. And as we come down, you're going to need a connection to your cable modem or whatever. So we're going to have our connection here. And that's going to go run down to your ISP. And this stands for Internet Service Service Provider. This is your cable modem. Uh, this is where you connect in the wall to your cable modem. Some people may still have dial-up, although that's not as popular now as it used to be. And there's several computers that are at your ISP. Um, in town here, it, it could be Hickory Tech. It, it's lots of different options. And one of the things they have, they have a series of servers here. And one of those servers is a DNS. And what the DNS, and that stands for Domain Name Server. And when you type in the name of a, a site that you want to see, such as google.com, that's in English, and it comes down to the Domain Name Server, and it looks up that English version, and it finds an IP address of where google.com or whatever you want is located. This, then, this number then goes back to your browser and your browser sends a second request, again, through the connection, through the ISP, and this time it skips the DNS and it goes out on the web or on the internet. So here's the steps we've done. We've gone from the browser We've set up our connection, our internet service provider. It checks the DNS, goes back, changes everything into ones and zeros to get the address, comes back, and then it goes down through a series of routers. Now, on the internet, which they usually call the cloud, there's a series of routers, which are also computers, that trigger the, the uh, the signal, the request, from one place to another until it gets to where it's going. And then it comes in through another connection, and as a protection, there's the firewall. So here's our firewall. And there's certain ports open on the firewall, so we're going to have just one port open on the firewall to let our web web pictures, our web request comes in. So this will be port 80. We also might have a door open for email or another door open for FTP. So here's our several little ports open. And then from there, we go up, and here's our server with our web page. Now, what's on the server is a series of text documents that end in HTML. And when we were in the browser and we said google.com, we're basically asking for the main page of google.com. So that request is sent through this whole pattern. It could go any which way in the internet goes through the firewall, comes to our server, and the server says, oh, yes, I have index.html. I also have a couple of JPEGs or GIFs that I'm going to send along because they're part of this page. So it's going to take these files and it's going to pack them all up into packets. 
And these packets have information that overlaps. So if one of the packets gets lost or uh, something happens to it, then the page can still be reconstructed. So these packets go back through the firewall, they go back through the systems of routers, they come back to your ISP through your connection, they come into your browser, your browser reconstructs the HTML and displays, in this case, the Google web page. So you can see that it's like a one way, this way, and then the server comes back, and then there's a return path coming back. Here's our return path coming back. It'll probably come to different routers. Comes to the internet service provider. It doesn't need to go to the DNS because it already knows it, the return address. So it comes to your internet service provider, comes to your connection, and into your page. So just to emphasize, we, our orange arrows go this way. And then our purple arrows send the way back. Now, the other thing about the internet is that what is sent from here, this file, is all converted into ones and zeros. Because the internet is a series of wires, and all it can have on it is either electrical charge or no electrical charge. And it looks like a pattern like this. And this would be a one, this would be a zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And if you had a several ones, it would look like there'd be a charge. And there's a timer ticking this off. So it's going tick, 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 and it knows. It's a millisecond timer. And so then, then it knows, or it's really fast time. It's not, probably not a millisecond, it's probably faster. And it knows all the ones and zeros. So that means your images here are all converted into ones and zeros into pulses, and this is just electrical pulses being sent through here. And when it gets here, it's converted into different colors and different pieces, and you, and you see the visual. So just know that what's working out on the internet is all ones and zeros. It's just not a whole big file that's copied over. It's disintegrated into ones and zeros and reintegrated in your Tiger browser. If we look at this list here, a graphic representation would go from the browser into your connection, connection to the ISP, the DNS. It would go back, come back down to the routers, the routers to the firewall, firewall to the server. The server says if it has a file or not, and then it comes back up through the routers, to your ISP, to your connection, and into your browser. Now, I'm not a great artist, but you can see the path there. 